Hello YouTube, my name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. Welcome to the 11th episode of Skate Talks. Today, my guest, I think is the youngest one that I've interviewed. My guest is sponsored by a brand that a lot of us don't know what's happening with it. And he already won the Winter Clash. He's been known for throwing hammers like a very, very few skaters would do. So, without no further ado, my guest today is Niels Janssens. I'm going to call the Latvian right now. Let's do this. <laughs> Yo, Niels, how are you doing? Hola, I'm great. Uh -huh. I can, hear, can you hear me good? Yes, that sounded good. What you up to? What you have you been doing? You were in Poland, huh? I was in Poland, yeah, recently. Um, now back home, we're organizing Alnis. Maybe you've heard about it? No, I didn't. Tell me, what is it? It's a big street contest here in Riga in Latvia. Oh, that's sick. And is it organized by you or who's organizing that event? Yeah, it's me and the homies. It started from the older generation, but now we took over for the for the last already like five years at least. Okay. And it's is it just street or is that like park or anything else? Too? Uh, it's been different over the years, but it's uh, it's pretty much just street now. It's the tenth year, and yeah, we're having some guests from Germany. I think Jo Zenk is coming over, and uh, someone else. That's sick. So Jo Zenk is also skating ramps. So the once I posted on Facebook that we were going to have this skate talk, I'm pretty sure you've read it, and I'm pretty sure that people has been making this question a lot. What's happening with Rams? Uh, good question. Well, <laughs> uh, well, it's been a little silence since there hasn't been a new model for the year. But uh, a new skate should be dropping soon, and hopefully it should all be, I mean, together with the theme, a new, new videos and a new stuff should be coming up real soon. It's been a little, little silent. Uh, I don't know. You should ask Kato. But, uh, yeah. I'm just I've, been, I've been waiting on Kato to... Uh, I sent him a message like a few weeks ago, but I haven't spoken with Kato in a while. So let's see if he gets back to me and I would like to make a skate talk with him too. Yeah, I think... Yeah, because be... I haven't talked with him personally, personally a lot too. So I don't have an insight of how he's doing as well, but... I'd like to talk with him as well, but Rams, yeah, it's been a little silent, but it's still going on, so okay. still all good. That's cool. I'm going to try to to give you a little bit more time every time that you talk, because the last time I've done one of these, a lot of people were just complaining that I wouldn't let Billy O'Neill speak, so I'm going to try to let you speak, and if sometimes there's some <laughs> silence, <laughs> it's just me trying to respect easy, everyone. Easy. <laughs> so, other than that, let's go into to the beginning. How did you first got into skating? You told me that you started skating at the age of nine. How did you got into skating? Yeah, that was inline skating. Before that, I was playing hockey uh, for a few years, I guess. Uh, my my dad like got me and my brother into hockey, so we had all the bases needed for inline skating. And then when I was nine, my brother was a little older. Uh, like five years older, he, five, six, he saw blading, actual blading on, on television. I don't know what it was, X Games or something. He asked for his skates and I just joined him straight away, you know. Mm -hmm. So tell me something. You just said blading and inline skating. What do you consider inline skating and what do you call blading? Sorry about making uh, this question, is... just trying to make it clear before. Yeah. I mean, with blading, I meant like doing grinds and uh, air tricks and grabs and stuff. Okay, so you would you would call inline skating. Sorry, you you would call blading to yeah. what people called aggressive skating is to what used to be called aggressive skating. Is that it? Yes, uh, that's what I would say. Blading, and a uh, longer version would be probably, for me, most sense makes freestyle inline skating, but whatever. And blading is the short version. 
<laughs> it's really, really like it's it's two completely different names, but I totally get it because it totally makes it's sense. Like, if we look at what's been happening lately, like all the biggest events are calling what we do blading, but at the same time we try to be politically correct, <laughs> so it's kind of weird. Yeah. I feel like as an Olympic sport, it it should be freestyle and skating, but it's like an urban our slang word we use blading it's like a short version but well whatever yeah <laughs> one one question why aren't you in china right now <laughs> no that's a good question well i don't know i haven't been like skated contest this year so far so i wasn't motivated to attend china world games as well i didn't i mean get in touch with our Latvian Federation about sending riders there. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe for the next year to start early to organize all that. But okay. So I'm going to make another question from that. Do you know if most of the guys in China right now, did they contact the federations or the, or the federations contact them? I have no idea. That's why I know that the the French guys they've been organized for quite a while, and I know that the Spanish team was made by Alexis. I don't know if you remember Alexis from being like a pro for rollerblade back in the day, but yeah. as for the other guys, I have no idea about it. So, yeah, to be honest, I'm not sure as well. I think in some countries they have a system worked out already, like years ago, but in others there's probably I don't know, not even a chance, you know, for people to make it out there yeah i don't know about that you know like when it comes to federations usually they have a budget for those type of things and it's like a lot of times if if there's a way for those countries to be known for something they usually invest on that they rather invest on that than investing on like probably building a skate park because that will give yeah. the politicians or whatever whoever is in front of it in charge of it a better name so that's all they want. <laughs> they want to get their name out there. So if they do, if they get something with one of their, one of the guys from yeah. their country getting their name out there, that's all they want. So I don't know. I mean, it's cool. Yeah, the world, world, the uh, world championships. But it would be even better if all the, the actual countries would be part of it. You know, yeah. like USA, yeah. from everywhere where good riders. Like if everyone would be part of it. That would, that would make most sense, but yeah. But you, you're you're not yeah. you're not against having a world champion, are you? No. Why would I? It's just I mean. You know, like it's a nice kind of yeah. I'm I'm saying that because like, yes, the world championships from Fears were were happening like two days ago, I think. That was when the results were. No, it was yesterday, and there were already people posting stuff on Facebooks like. Yeah, now we have a world champion and, you know, like kind of like making fun of the whole thing. That's why I was asking, you know, like yeah. it's kind of like in skateboarding when there's like a real core skateboarder. They all they never want skateboarding to be Olympic or they wouldn't want to have a world champion. That's why I'm asking your opinion. I have my own opinion. I actually just filmed a little video about it, which is going to be online today. But these things that we're recording right now will be hopefully tomorrow. So, mm -hmm. That's why I was asking your own opinion. Try to to know what you think of it. Yeah, I probably have like more more opinions, or like depending on how I look on it. You know, of course, core wise, it's for sure the real blading is for me would be streets as well, and not in like world championships. But still, it's it's some concept that can uh, build this the sport. Uh, as something larger, you know, as, as something more mainstream or whatever you want to call it, but just, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. It does, I mean, it's not bad for the for the whole sport, for sure, you know. I guess it, in, I think it's, it's important to, for kids to have goals. And usually kids, they, they don't want to be the Alex Brosco or the whatever they want if there's a goal, would be like a world champion or whatever, you know? And this is the kind of goals that we never, we could never add before because there was nothing official. There was yes, like the WRS sure. thing that you end up winning, right? <laughs> no, me? No, 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 no. I was, I was me. 
part of some event that it was part of the double WRS, but no. No, the, the I, upload one? Didn't you want the upload one, the videos? Uh, uploaded. They uploaded. Uh, I don't remember if I won. I got fan favorite, but I think someone else won it. Was it you? I think it was you, or you, or David Sizemore. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just wrong. Anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what's your connection with the pump tracks because i've seen like first before i you even reply to this i've seen that you've been skating a lot more with bigger wheels and you're doing marathons and all that and i've also s seen a few pictures and content of you with the pump tracks do you have any connection with the company that makes them or what's going on i do i kind of do yes people i know has a company that makes them so they, they asked me to show up at the opening ceremonies and skate it. Uh, they are cool people and they're just making uh, already few around Latvia. So I think it's a cool, cool thing where to, I don't know, pick up, pick up skates and just start to have fun, you know, after you go to the skate park. Yeah, it seems sick. From what I've seen, they've Ill, if they're even making pump tracks in schools, and that's amazing. I can't imagine myself going to school and having a pump track in my school. That's yeah. like, yeah, this is the last one you probably seen a couple of days ago. Yeah, I saw that, and I've seen also one a few months ago that you were rolling like a fence with a power slide, one hundred twenty-five yeah. skates, and all that. So this one a few days ago, it's it's yeah, actually in like a. Next to the school, in yeah, it's next to the school. It's like school's property, so kids actually like it's available for them, yeah, like all the time, like during the classes and stuff. So it's super cool, but at the same time, it's quite dangerous as well, and it needs some kind of you know program or system under it. Mm -hmm. Like it, you can't just throw throw a pump track, like like you said, kids need goals. You know, there should be a, some program. Uh, that kind of and are you working with them in that like trying to give classes and stuff like that uh, not yet I mean I do give classes we have a blading school here in Riga but hopefully we can uh, together with like other schools and with the main main skate park in Riga our future goal is to work like on a on a new project which would have like a legal program under like all the schools so they can actually legally like legally even afford it to the schools you know to have like alternative classes for example uh, have skating instead of just sports yeah that's sick like choosing like a specific sport while they're going to sports in general yeah, yeah, right? yeah. that makes sense exactly. yeah in portugal but, i remember like um I, I could choose like surfing and i could choose like sports like this in my school and then also in university i could choose those type of sports but i've studied sports so that's normal and yeah. other than that what's up with with you what are you doing in your daily basis i have no idea man what else are you doing other than skating and teaching kids oh uh, yeah freelance blade blader <laughs> are you a freelance I mean, blader now i mean i'm i'm skating for my sponsors but uh, other things I do are all pretty much connected to blading as well. Like the summer, even though I don't have a like a day to day job, it was super uh, super filled and pretty busy. Uh, I organized GG Fest, the whole blading part you probably heard. Mm -hmm. heard about that. Yeah, so that's getting pretty big event here. Uh, during the same time, I managed to do like four camps here in here in Latvia with kids, run the blading school, uh, do a couple projects for my sponsors, and uh, yeah, a few that's other amazing. events that's that I amazing. maybe didn't took the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's been just coming to me. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, can can a pro skater afford to leave without competing because you told me that this year you're not competing in anything but you're still living from skating and you're still doing your own projects that's the question like is is it possible for someone to leave from skating without competing i, I know the answer from my side you know like 
for me, I do live from skating and I do not compete on anything like that, but it's on a different type of skating and or a diff, uh, I'm not really related to skating the same way yeah, as exactly. you are. So that's why I'm making yeah, this question. You're, you're a perfect example. You can do it, you know. So it's it's working out for me as well and I guess it's up to your like ambitions, what do you want? Like if you if you want to live like high class and for sure you'll be looking for a job but for me it's i don't know but it all i, I think seek it... deep <laughs> sorry i i couldn't stop interrupt you <laughs> <laughs> sorry let i'll let you talk and then i'll i'll tell you what i was gonna no, 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 ask, ask. no the, the thing is like i guess living high class it's i don't know it's so a thing that it doesn't i think the high class for me means quality class comes from quality and the quality is like it's different from person like you know like for for some people being high class might mean having the best car and drinking the best champagne for some other people being able to have the best skates and travel the world it's their high class i guess it's like everyone have their own lifestyle their their own way of living like one of your really good friends josh glowicki for me is like a really good example of it for me josh lives a high class life because he's able to travel and he skates and that's it for me that you know it's just a different way of but yeah true true I think I totally agree. <laughs> so for me yeah i'm living high class <laughs> <laughs> are your are, you, are your next skates going to be gold? You're gonna have a gold <laughs> rams. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> no, are you are you even having any rams pro model, or is there's no plans or no talking about it? No plans yet on that. No, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, and is Yo Sank having any pro model skate that you know? Have no have no clue as well about that. Mm, okay, <laughs> I'm just trying to push something from you, but it's not happening. Yeah. But I need uh, to tell you that I, I love. Tell, sorry, sorry. What I can tell uh, a team skate should be dropping real soon. So about about next one, I'm not sure yet. Okay, and how's your how is that skate coming? Along? Like, do you have you seen it? Have you tested it? Do you have any idea of how the skate is going to look? Something that you can say, of course, obviously. Yeah, it's gonna look like uh, the classic freedom of feet concept. Some some small improvements, maybe n yeah, some some actually noticeable improvements on the look mostly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I actually have it. Ah, uh, that's so. <laughs> sick. Are you skating them already? Yeah, I had one session actually. It's not the final like uh, actual color of how it's gonna be, mm -hmm. but it's just like, the prototype. So. Yeah, it's super solid, super nice. So far, one session was great. <laughs> That's awesome. That, in the, it's cool that you're saying it's solid because how do you feel about the Remedy skates? I love Remedies. I, in fact, I don't know if you ever knew about it, but before I started skating for USD, I skated for Rams for a little bit. It was my first sponsor that I ever get like in contact with the real brand. I started skating for Rams and I skated just for a little bit because I got hurt and then I didn't skate for three months and then I got like this proposal for USD to get paid and all that. But before that, I skated Rams for a little bit and I really loved the skates. But a few years later, I tried skating the Rams again and somehow I felt I couldn't do negative tricks the same way because I always felt that they were um bending out a little bit but i know that there was some improvements being done on that and that's why i'm asking is it like are they working on the stiffness of the skates the newest ones is a little bit stiffer or it's the same thing it's a concept and people need to adapt to that um uh, i'm not sure there's like the skin there's a little improvement on the skin kind of type of how it wraps around the skate mm -hmm. so I don't, I'm not sure if it affects that uh, thing you're talking about, but yeah, I mean, people have been saying that it's like easier to do topside tricks with rams, you know, because there's... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about it, but then the thing is, I, when I had them, I used to love them for topside tricks. Like I told you, I couldn't do the negative tricks as good, but for topsides, it was amazing. And man, I, think, I guess like everyone have their own taste for skates, but... 
I just don't know if I could skate like a big wheel frame, like the new flat frame from Anthony. Have you seen that okay. frame? Have you seen the frame? Yeah, from? maybe the rest. Yeah, maybe something like that maybe would be harder. But it's maybe it's just me. I guess some people would actually adjust to that. I just wanted to know if you knew anything about that. Yeah, not too sure, but for sure it's not uh, maybe the best skate for like big wheel skating. Like I mean, big big eighty millimeter or bigger. Mm -hmm. Probably made for uh, for uh, smaller wheels. But other than that, it feels pretty solid. Yeah. I mean, Yo Zeng, I've seen him doing like crazy negative slides for me as well. I mean, I've never been onto that like type of tricks, but I mean, I see him like true spin negative Macios on, on ledges and it feels crazy. Yeah, but he's he's doing that on rams, so yeah, I guess, yeah. Yo is <laughs> Yo Zeng is just amazing. It's like, I remember it wasn't a while ago when I started what seeing him skate I think it was like from the summer clash the last summer clash something like that that's when I started seeing him like then I start paying attention because of like those front like in between the like I think it's channel 11 fast slides or whatever that was stuff like that but since then he's just he's on a mission man <laughs> it's amazing he's really really yeah. good I love what he does yeah for sure other than that, any other plans for any more videos like the one you did, the last one? That was amazing. You want to tell us a little bit more about that video? That Was it Perception, oh, the name thanks, of it? Man. Yeah, Perception. Yeah. Why Perception? Tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, well, I don't know. Perception is just, I don't know. It's maybe the, the quote that was in the like a teaser photo just before we released uh, pretty much sums it up it's it's like it's meant of how we see things you know it's up to you how you how you choose to see things around you so that's like in a funny way my perception of I go to the park and it's just I see all this crazy stuff and uh, same as in like everyday life you know it's how you choose to see things around in a negative way or in a funny way or a, you see a chance or you see, a, I don't know, or a fault. But other than that, yeah, it's just we wanted to do together with my brother something like different. And it started with, with idea, hey, let's let's get some like actors do some stuff and kind of try to make, make it funny. And we just shaped the concept till, till, we, till we got what, what you see. So... Ah, it was a it was pretty hard work and uh, and but yeah, for sure, I'm super excited about the final final piece and super thankful to everyone who was part of it since it, it was a like super low budget uh, low budget. Uh, I mean production. Yeah, low. I mean financially, we didn't have any any support behind it, so just. We did what we could with, with what we got. We got good connections with the I mean, all the works in a. He lights up the, for the movies and and and, and everything, uh, starting from the from the sounds and ending with the editing by my brother and lightning by the old lady homie. But it took just all a long time, long hours. So I'm super excited. It all just worked out so well that's amazing let me i'm gonna make you two questions uh, after what you just said the first is like how much did you guys spend to do it and the second one is how many days did you need skating to get with this final product um uh, the first question i think we spent like five nights if i'm not mistaken four of actual skating and then one more to get like some extra shots but but still we worked like from I don't know ten in the evening till six in the morning. We went home seven in the eight or sometimes even nine in the morning, went to sleep. So it was pretty intense nights for sure. Um, what was the second question? The budget. The budget that you guys spend on it. The money spent uh, to do it. Do you have an idea? Or it didn't make the mats? Not really. 
Yeah. I spent some from my pocket, some some little support from BHC, and here and there. Really not uh, not sure because I organized some. Most I try to get through by getting uh, putting a logo at the end of the video, so people would uh, help us out. You know, yeah. give lightning equipment, give us the place to shoot it, and help with uh, building obstacles. So, big shout out to everyone that was part of making it happen. Yes. That's sick. That's really amazing. That, like, uh, seriously, I need to say, like, thank you so much for what you do. Because, man, I, you know, I work with brands that some of them should do that sometimes, <laughs> and it's not a lot of. It's. I don't think it's about the brands. It's more about the skaters. There's not a lot of skaters with the will that you have. Like every time that there's a new product or there's something. Even someone said it on the, on Facebook. It's like every time there's a new video from you, it ends up being like a whole production thing. And then there's other brands or there's other skaters out there that they, if they need to promote something, they go out one day and they make it. How do you feel about it? How do you feel about like the difference in between someone like you that puts so much effort to see like a one minute, two minute, three, vi three minute video done and then some other guys like myself <laughs> I'll make like man sometimes seven days a week I make seven different videos I know it's a different type of video it's a different type of work but sure. how do you feel for like seeing people doing this type of stuff because it's completely different and even for someone like you that pays so much attention to detail and wants to put your own skating out there and all on a certain way do you have anything to say about this well I don't know. Usually, I've been working mostly with my brother on video project during all my skating years, and a lot I think comes from him because he's like a perfectionist. You know, he wants every detail to be perfect. So that's one thing. While we usually make it to the, like as best as we can, you know, there's no reason to make it halfway kind of. And the other is I don't know just want to make something special because there's I don't know just feel like making something different that's kind of yeah. more interesting for us you know it's that makes like sense. Hey, let's do this because we've never done this before and it could be a cool result and and then it's just up to you know seeking uh, chances to do it like now you know you know like there's hundred things you need and you don't have but then again if you want to make it happen, it's just up to like getting it done. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you, so. you. I guess you're telling me that you like to challenge yourself, and your brother likes to challenge himself too. And then you end up putting everything together and try to come with something unique. Yeah, for sure, for sure, exactly. Challenges. That's that's for sure one thing that drives us. That's that's really nice. It's it's. For someone like me, like I try to watch as many videos every single day. I watch so much stuff. And like when I watch something like that, it's different because, you know, like nowadays there's so much content, content being put out there. Like most of them, I, I'm like just being honest. Sometimes you just skip, skip, skip. You watch half of it and you skip. And then when you watch something like what you've done, you end up repeating and watching it like once, twice, three times. And it's... There's not a lot of things nowadays that I would watch more than once and I'm being honest with you. And it's funny because most of the things that I watch more than once come from brothers, which is, <laughs> it's amazing. It's you and your brother working, it's Eugen and his brother working, and it's Colin and Sean Kel. So it's, it's funny, but it, it is like that. <laughs> it's a teamwork, yeah. It's always a teamwork, you know. <laughs> I got a sister. That doesn't happen with me. <laughs> <laughs> for us, sure, it's like something we want to look at, look, look back at after years, you know, and see our, our, how we have evolved, you know, like where we've got, where we started, and where has it got us? Like, uh, see the, see the progress of what we can do. Yeah, but that's sick. It's like, it's like, it's funny. It's just funny that, like, the brotherhood, the brotherhood works, <laughs> something like that. Anyway, question. Why marathons? Why did you start making marathons? Uh, I didn't. It was super spontaneous. I woke up. I called Mirek. We were in Poland. 
and he asked like, hey, you want to do it? And I just agreed and a couple hours later I was already there and we were preparing to do a marathon. Was so it your first there's time? There's no... Yeah, first full marathon. Sick. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Am I going to see you in Berlin? Um, I'm afraid not. Yeah, I was thinking about it after like we were talking about it. Yeah, let's do it. Berlin should be awesome, but I'm not sure if I can make it out just for the marathon. Come on, it's not just for the marathon. We'll skate around town. Let's do it. Come on. You said you like challenges, so. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that, that's, why I, that's why I did the marathon in the first place. Yeah, I know. Come over. Berlin. There's a lot of us coming, so you need to join us. Yeah, I know. It's going to be it's gonna be a fun pack. <laughs> I will think about it once, once, for sure. Okay. Tell me something else. What other sponsors do you have? You're skating for Rams, skating for BHC. Who else are you skating for? Head on Skate Shop? Head on Skate Shop and Ground Control Frames. Oh, yeah, of course. And That's pretty much it. Four, four of them. Okay. And are you getting paid by... That's, I need to make you this question. I'm sorry. If you don't want to answer, <laughs> you don't answer this question. Are you getting paid by Rams or it's not really happening? Uh, not really, just when I get a pro boot, yeah. Okay, so you get loyalties, that's the thing, that's how it works with Rams. Yeah, when you get some signature stuff, then it's mostly the only thing, or when you work on some. Nice. And how did you got into Remedies? I still call it Remedies, I'm sorry, I know that most of the people might be hearing this and calling like, it's might be thinking, it's not Remedies, it's Rams, but it comes from Remedies, yeah, so. It's, it's <laughs> same thing, yeah. Uh, it was actually through Head on Skate Boss Mirek. I was skating at I was skating Shadow Skates just before. <laughs> you were skating Shadows. Uh, I can't yeah, imagine because you were so tiny with Shadows. Could you turn without the the soul plates touching the ground? Yeah, of course. There's wait, which part of Shadows? There's my brother movies like Ticket to Ride. I think Ticket to Ride. One, there for sure some footage of me is getting shadows. Sick. Let's let's try to um, get some views on that video then. <laughs> Ticket to ride. And then, and then I think uh, Mirek was in like in good touch with Kato, and the Kato just was looking for some riders around Europe, and I got offered, hey, wanna try Rams? And from there, I was kind of on the Europe Europe team, skating Rams. Mm -hmm. Starting to get free skates, and from there it just went naturally. Yeah, that's cool. But you, you, you won it. You made it. You, you made your, your own place in the Rams team. You know it. We all know it. So it's nothing got offered, new. Got offered. I started skating them and really enjoyed them, and just kept kept doing it. It just naturally kind of yeah. And went there. And I'm sure that you also saw this question. Why have you been so loyal to Rams all these years? Didn't you got any proposals from any other brands? Or you just, you don't even, if, if that happens, you ignore it? Or I, I have no idea. You know what I'm <laughs> trying to say. Like, you've been, we, you want I, so much stuff. You've been so much on top of the game. But you, you just say that you don't get paid. Of course, money is not the most important thing. And that's not what I'm trying to say. And if you love the product, you love the product. And that's the most important thing. And like we said before, that's your high class. So that's what it matters. But why? Uh, well, for me, it's mostly, I mean, I have a lot of loyalty for, for the ones who first like saw me and saw potential in me and started, you know, supporting me, like some, like, for example, BHC, way back in the day, they just said like, hey, we love what you do and we'd like to support you. And I've been just loyal to ones that, that are they, there, like for me since like day one, you know, yes. same as with rent. So, you know, if there's no, re no actual reason or to change, I wouldn't like, I don't know. Was change. That? I've been asked for, from different brands, like skate skate brands and uh, wheel brands as well. But uh, yeah, that's what I've said. Like I'm loyal to the one I'm I'm riding for right now, and 
yeah, just stayed, stayed there. Okay. And have you ever been get? Have you ever been offered to get paid for any other brand, and you say no because I'm loyal to Rams? Mm, well, uh, not not really. No, no actual salary. Yeah. Like. Uh, yeah, I know it works. Usually they always go like, you want to try the skates and da da da, da and then you need to grow inside the brands. Unless yeah. every now and then something will happen. But, and one one other question is, did you, did BHC got in contact with you to start skating for BHC before that battle from you with, with Julian at the Winter Clash? Was that before or after? Uh... What were what winter class you said? I think it's like the one that you were really really tiny. It was you and I think it was you and Julian Cudo. Like you guys uh, made the finals in juniors. Okay, or something. okay, I remember. Like year two thousand seven. Yeah, I think that was my first winter clash, and I was getting shadow skates there. What? <laughs> I don't remember. I remember that you were so good. I remember watching those two really know. tiny kids. Like you talking about. Yeah, 2007, my first winter clash, I was skating shadows, for sure. That's sick. So, and it's sick that uh, both of you, you and Julian, then started skating for Rams, because Julian was also on Rams for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but about DHC, I don't actually remember if it was through Head on Skate as well, or I got the direct email from Mark or someone from BHC. But yeah, you started with, hey, we want to send you a package of wheels. And they were the first ones, so. That's sick. It's, it's, uh, it was just curiosity because the first time I saw you was at the Winter Clash. I just wanted to, to ask you if anyone ever noticed that you, you existed before the Winter Clash. I didn't knew. And then suddenly there's that really tiny kid killing it. You and Julian, like the two of you. I've seen Julian before that, like a... A few years before that, it was even smaller, even tinier, in Paris doing a 900 over the spine. And I remember that from a Portuguese video from like 2004 or 2005. And it was really, really tiny. But for me to make, like, to connect the dots and realize that he was the same kid that went to the final with you on the Winter Clash and then a few years later won the Winter Clash. It, just, it took me a few years to understand that. <laughs> yeah. And tell me, what projects do you have for the future? Do you have any skating projects? Anything like do you want? Do you have any project for like a shop, a brand, a trip? Anything happening with your life anytime soon? Uh, I definitely want to work on some media projects in the future, but nothing specific. Sure, name of the perception one, but maybe something just way different. But still, something that just you know, not not the regular, something with a more scenario and more like personality in it, just something that you want to watch more, more than once. And, <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> and that is kind of true to the core, core skating, but still entertaining for for someone who has never seen blading or or the kids. You know, just like the cool video. Okay, that makes sense. And starting something on your own, did you ever thought about it? It's just like, I don't know, man. Because like, I've seen that you have so much respect in your country, in Latvia. I've seen you on TV a few times. I've seen like, you're quite big in there. It looks like, at least for someone who never been there, which is me. But... Yeah, it's a small country, but uh, yeah. It seems like you're quite big in there. Did, did, and even in the skating industry, even if it's not like, we know it's a small industry somehow, but did you never thought of starting something your own? Oh, maybe some ideas here and there, but no, not really. We've been having our community with the homies, which we organized events and uh, made some projects happen, but nothing on my own. Like I've had ideas of you know having your own brand like over the years, but I don't know it hasn't got that far to actually making something happen Man, you got the connections let me tell you <laughs> you know Mirik Mirik from Eden like he has all the connections when it comes to clothing and stuff like that it seems like you have a really good taste too and you have a yeah. lot of fans play with that man yeah 
risk it. Yeah, if you don't risk okay. it, you'll never know. Because <laughs> I know if you want to do it, you you have to like jump hundred percent in, you know, and uh, you just need to put a lot of a lot of different stuff on, like pause and then full full focus on one actual project. So that's why probably so much stuff has been happening around, and yeah. Okay, so for now, there's not that plan yet. Not yet. No, not yet. I don't <laughs> think so. It's a big attachment <laughs> uh, okay. for this part of my life. But maybe, who knows? Who knows? Okay. And is there any traveling happening soon? Traveling? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Berlin Marathon, maybe. <laughs> <You know. laughs> yeah, that's cool, huh? You came from, I'm not going to make it to maybe Berlin. That's cool. I, I like that one. <laughs> I will look into it. Maybe it's cool, but I don't have the proper skates for it. I borrowed, but I can do it on my Mega Cruisers. Yeah, you got the I can, I can, man, we can organize your frame for that shit. Long frame for that. I did it on, I just borrowed like the power side Marathon skates. Did that Once work for I, you? I guess I finished, but still, after like 10k, I felt like a big blister was. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm asking because it's something. It's something that you need to get used to it, and <laughs> that's crazy. That's why I was asking. For me, it was like 10 minutes of like testing them out, and okay, let's do a marathon. So, <laughs> so it was, <laughs> yeah, pretty intense. <laughs> <laughs> Embracing the challenge completely. I was, there. I was like, no way back. I'm doing this for, I don't know. I was motivating myself, you know, this is for my family. I can do it. <laughs> no matter how painful, I can finish it. Man, let me tell you, I skate with those big wheel skates almost every day, and I'm scared. And I used to do marathons like a long time ago, like in the late 90s, no, in early 90s till like 97 or 98, you're still like five or six years old. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> back then I used to do marathons. I was actually like Portuguese marathon record holder for a few years. But now I haven't done one since 97, 98. So it's been like 20 years. I'm so scared of that. Uh, seriously, I I, mean, I even bought those, I didn't bought, I got those nail food. It's kind of like a neoprene sock that you put on top because I just, I hate getting blisters, man. And it doesn't matter what skate you get. If you're not used to skate those distances, mm -mm, it's going to happen. Yeah. And other than that, what, have you been using those big wheel skates? Because you got the mega cruisers. Have you been using them to cruise around the city or it's just like something that you use yeah, every now and then? Yeah, yeah. For sure, a lot, quite a lot during the summer as well, just for my kind of physical practice as well, you know, just go skate some distance or, mm -hmm. or just like a casual ride with my girlfriend and someone else, cruise the city, cruise the parks. When I was still on my recovery, I was kind of using those more, so I don't get too fast into doing grinds, so I was just cruising skateboards and just doing little jumps and stuff. That's cool. And are you doing tricks on that stuff too, like slides and shit like that? Or are you not even trying it? Just you're staying true to the core skating scene, and I have no idea. No, no. I mean, I'm not too focused about, too serious about mega cruisers. It's just a lot of fun, and I love like skating as activity, and it's super enjoying to just cruise around streets. That's but sick. still, of course, there, I love to take my rims and just go to the park or street with the homies that's perfect and tell us you said something about your recovery what exactly happened because it was f it was going on and on for a while right i've seen you like getting hurt on your knee or something like that and then i thought you were recovered and then again you went for another surgery so what really happened there and how was the whole thing uh yeah because i because i tore my ACL twice. The first one was my actual ACL, and the second time I tore my, like the, like the fake one, like like the one they put, replace the original one when you get torn. So basically, after the first surgery, it took like almost a year, you know, to recover. It's a long, long, long time. You can already walk pretty kind of soon, but it still takes time till. Uh, Till your knee like fully heals, it, it's heal, it's healing for a year or something, like 
So I basically, I just went too fast back in and uh, was feeling kind of great, but still kind of not fully, fully kind of like some little mental barriers to it. So when I fell, I was kind of, I don't know, I didn't feel natural. I felt quite clumsy. And then I torn it again. Damn First it. time was in year 2013, I think. Wait, 14? 14. 14. 2014. Then I fixed it. The uh, year went. And then I kind of broke it again during the summer in Italy contest. And uh, that was year 2015. And then, then I was like, fuck, this sucks. <laughs> and, uh, but still, you can live without the ACL. So I kind of recovered, like not doing the surgery, but kind of recovered as good as I can. Started just doing physical trainings and still skating. So I was uh, skating a lot and... Uh, then I decided before winter, winter uh, 2016, which is like last year before winter, mm -hmm. I will do it so I can re recover during the, the winter and, and skate already next summer. And uh, yeah, that's what I did. Then I got another surgery done. So it's been ups and downs, but it's been all, all good going. For and we did the perception actually when I... Before I went for the second surgery. Oh, so, so it's been a long. You filmed it a long time ago, is that it? Uh, quite. Yeah, we filmed it already. Already last year. But it just took a lot of preparation, like doing the editing and preparing the music, actual, and working with all the designs and waiting for the actual wheel to get produced. So, from the actual filming days to the final final like video being ready like it was pretty long time yeah for sure that's cool and were you using the wheel already in perception like a yeah it was like a prototype wheel okay and tell me yeah. with all those just, sorry, you can, sorry finish whatever you were saying i'm sorry about that no no no, no I, finished. <laughs> I need to say that because otherwise i'm gonna get killed <laughs> no anyway so the question is and after all those injuries and all that stuff, didn't you think your way of skating somehow changed? Because all of us, including myself, we were used to seeing you skating like, it's like, it's not a go big or go home. It's like a do or die. It's like, it, it always felt like you were like yeah. a will yes, to sure. die. I'm oh, sorry yeah. about that, but it, it felt a little weird. Kind of like watching Carlos sure. Pinoski as a kid, something yeah. like that. <laughs> My biggest inspiration, Carlos Pianowski, for sure. Chris Haffey and uh, all the stunt blading. Uh, Brandon Campbell, Aaron Feinberg, my all-time biggest inspiration, for sure. And that's how I used to skate a lot. But as I've got older, all the injuries kind of stopped me from doing that. So I just had to... The injuries, like, naturally kind of transformed my skating. Because I still love skating. It's not just about big hammers, do or die. So I just had to kind of adapt myself to, to different kind of type of skating, which I surely enjoyed same same as much or even more, just so I can, you know, keep skating and not be injured all the time. So it's just, I know a lot of people expect me, hey, <laughs> do that hurricane topsail on a drop rail, but it's just no need to, you know, risk of being getting injured again. Well, you can just have the same amount of fun and just do, I don't know. Do yeah. You've done something in the big rail that I would never even do, like in the smallest ledge or in the smallest rail, that 540 alley-oop top so at the Winter Clash. For people that never been there, that rail is big. Seriously, it's we know it. It's not like a huge street rail, but it's a big rail. We all know it's a big rail. And you've done like... What was going through your head to even spin a 540 to an alley-oop top so on that rail? I have no idea what's going. I don't know. I don't know what's your mindset for that. Yeah, I don't know. It was like fully juiced, fully like the moment, <laughs> fully, yeah, fully in the moment, fully commit commitment. So it's just you know, you're not thinking about hey, something can go wrong. Oh, of course, of course. Time, when I actually 
go for it. It's just like I'm seeing it. Like I'm not feeling like it's something hard, you know. It's just like something you fully go for 100%, and that's that's when you can get it. But have you done it before that day? Uh, not sure. I think it was the first time I did it. It's crazy because, like, if you do it on a transition, like a lot of people do that type of tricks. You know it. You've done it too. Yeah, like that's for a, a transition a to something, it's easy. But from flat, it's not the same. I just I don't know. <laughs> it's just too weird for me. So yeah, it's just something I did for myself. You know, it's not like hey, I got. I got to lace this to, 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 I don't know, finish first or something. It was just like, hey, this is the moment. Like, yeah, I mm. feel it. I, I didn't even think I had it in my mind before the finals. It just naturally came like, yeah. like, hey, I can do this. So, I guess, I guess one, like watching, yeah. looking, looking forward at the winter clash. And it's kind of like looking at, you know, that rally car racing when you see like all the people moving away for the car to go. It's something like that. Every time I watch Winter Clash footage, it's just crazy. I, I seriously, I skated the Winter Clash in the first year. I've competed in pro for like three or four years, in the first years. But then it's just it's just not my thing. And sometimes I even, I don't know, man. I'm I'm kind of like as a as a father now because I'm a father now. I don't know if I would want my if I had a boy or even if my girl ever wanted to compete or skate. I didn't. I don't want. The, I don't know if I want her. To watch that type of skating, it's kind of scary, huh? Because it's just crazy. Yeah. Like guys looking at the, they they can't even see the rail or whatever they're jumping. It's just people just moving away, and then suddenly they see the spot, and then they throw us, throw the biggest thing they can. It's just it's just crazy. I don't know what to explain. You know it better than I do. So For people who enjoy like doing like the crazy stuff, like you know, getting over fear and just doing like the craziest you can. I mean, not even crazy, but just technical and big. Mm -hmm. And Winter Clash is just an incredible place where to do it, you know. It's just it's yeah. awesome uh -huh. feel and the yeah. awesome energy, you know. Yeah, the whole now vibe. Hey, you choose the spot, people will just move, and you're like, hey, I can do whatever now, you know. <laughs> yeah. It kind of feels like it needs to be now, this is the moment, something like that, right? Yeah. I, can't let them, I can't let them down. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. So that's like second, uh, uh, kind of second part of it. The first is like, hey, now, now is the time where, it's like, everything's possible. But it's for sure not for everyone. You know that kind of skating. I I understand people who don't enjoy being like, not, you know, hundred people looking at you like, hey, impress us. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly the thing. Like impress us, and then it's like, ah, he wasn't big enough. Like. It did really good, but it wasn't big enough. If you have the feeling that, you, yeah, if you have the feeling that you need to impress someone, then for sure it's just a, it's hard to get like juiced and kind of you know fully into moment. But when you're like doing it, just like you know stepping up your own game and you enjoy it, yeah, and for for that it's just awesome, awesome feeling and an awesome place to be at the Winter Clash. Yeah, skate the finals. That's sick. And what do you think of the new? era of skating that small obstacle fast feet tippity tappity whatever that is kind of like that i don't know that bench and that sidewalk grind what do you think of it i mean it's fun for sure and it's cool you know it's skating has no limits and it, it shouldn't have any limits so it's just up to everyone how he sees it and how he wants to skate so it's cool you can skate bench with just so much style and technique that it's more impressive than doing yeah. I don't know I know exactly what you're saying and that's why I'm making that question and the skate park yeah so uh, I remember like a few years ago there was this competition in in Lyon and there was like all these guys doing like you know that La Foche I think it's La Foche or something like that I don't know how to say it that those ledges in Lyon those really short down ledges you can make like the weird kinked, curved kinked. It's in France, south of France. Anyway, so there was these guys doing all these crazy spins into grinds and whatever. And Mark Moreno, Enano, just made a soul. He just did a, a simple soul grind in a ledge. And everyone clapped hands. <laughs> and it's kind of like, you know that Belgium guy? Uh, what's his name? The guy that used to skate for, um, for Shadow. I think he was also 
on Eden's Gate somehow or forward freestyle. I don't know. I don't remember his name. It's like he has one of the best true spin top souls in Europe. I I know what I know who you're talking about. Oh, yeah, man, I don't remember his name. I'm sorry, man. It's just <laughs> anyway. No, I know. I can't get the name as well, but I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah, but it's just like he is just so good. Whenever he does just a simple soul, like a zero spin soul or whatever, it's just so good that you don't need to do all that crazy shit. So, I guess what you're saying is. Yeah, and exactly same for same for yourself. You know, I can do a soul grind and enjoy it like so much, like more than even doing a hurricane top soul. You know, it just that, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, like if you get like for me nowadays, I I much rather like I was always lazy to jump to a high rail, and I was always the type of guy that I would love to skate a steep rail. It doesn't matter if it's a steep rail, I go fast and I hit it. it doesn't matter what. If I fall, I fall, but it's more like a commitment thing. And Same jumping in, yeah, oh. just jumping into a high rail, I'm just like lazy. But nowadays, I can still do like steep rails if I try it. Like last time, last year, I've done some, but I I enjoy it so much more just like a super low rail and really really long just like surf it or even just skating yeah. <laughs> i don't know just enjoy <laughs> okay so let me see if i got something else for you from what else do you have any other thing that you want to tell us yeah uh, well not sure <laughs> i didn't actually read that read the comments of your post as well so i don't know what people what people want to know yeah i think i guess people just want to know from you just want to know what you think and i don't know let me make you one question what's your skate setup at the moment the skate setup yeah uh it's the new remedies hr2 uh, what's, the, what's the name uh, hr I'm sure it's HR2, yeah, there were HR1, 1.2, 1.3, and this is like the second version. Okay, what color are they? I'm having all black them with the mega frames, ground control. Mm -hmm. uh, waiting waiting for my 64 millimeter BHC wheel. It's still not, not here, the, the, the whole, like, produced wheels, the whole bunch. So what, skates, like, what wheels are you skating now? Uh, ground control 64, like the regular the okay. mega frame. And uh, that's about it. And I'm skating like a power slide liner as well, the, which I got the MyFit liner. Uh, well, I'm not sure. This is like an old one with the purple, purple some purple color on it. Is purple it like a thumb. slim one or like a, th a thick one? Yeah. Have an idea. Good. I don't know. Medium, <laughs> medium. Because <laughs> there's a few different models. That's why I was asking. Could be the my feet, the fat. It's boy. like an old, older one from. A, it's like from an old Imperial skate. Uh, yeah, so it's a real, a real power slide liner. Okay, it's not really, not even a fat boy liner. Okay. Yeah, some yeah, some person like was asking on, on on Facebook. Someone was asking about the the Rams liners. They said like, why are they so bad? I actually enjoyed the the Rams liners when I had the Rams skates. But what do you think of the Rams liners? Why did you change the liner? I don't know. It's just liners been changing for Rams as well over the years. Like they they used to have this like low liners, and then for the last model they had kind of different one more like a jug one mm -hmm. mm. i don't know it just i think it's very kind of specific for for everyone's needs like liner can change a lot of the feeling that you're getting from the skate completely a liner can make the skate a lot stiffer or a lot more flexible so so that's why i don't know i've, I've been skating rem liners sometimes i've been just putting something else in like power slide or jug ones and it's just about the feeling you know you cannot make the liner that fits everyone's needs it's just it's yeah okay and why the mega frame i know that you are having a 64 millimeter wheel but you used to skate the big frames right didn't you skate the big for a while yes i skated big since they they've been produced but now the mega is in like a newer thing so i tried I tried Megas and been on them ever since. 
they're just perfect for 64 millimeter wheels and that's what i've been skating like lately for past year or two already that's sick would you go back to to 60s or to 58s or 56s or anything like that I yeah i did skate for a couple of weeks this summer like the anti-rocker setup <laughs> which was cool as well but i don't know then i got back to flat it's just more speed more 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 like possibility to to maneuver and still you can do every grind you know dude i don't that, know let me let me tell you like the le so i've been skating the ales for a while and a few weeks ago because i have a pair of uh, usd sways that i was skating with the big wheels with the big wheels i thought let me try let me give a, a let me give it a try to anti rocker setup so I put it some Kaiser frames with 59 millimeter wheels and anti rockers. Man, I don't like to to talk shit on the stuff that I used to skate, but it was seriously the worst feeling that I've had in the last year. Like I felt like I I didn't know how to skate. It was so weird. I couldn't turn every time I was trying to turn. I was feeling like my boot would be touching the ground and I would fall or I couldn't really turn because you know like it's such a wide base yeah. without any wheel in the middle. And then when I was trying to grind on ledges, which is, should be the biggest advantage, I wasn't finding that much of a difference comparing to the AN, which is a flat setup. So I don't know. I'm right now skating the 72 AANs with mm -hmm. one, like three 68 millimeter wheels. And I have one wheel, which is 72. And it works nice. I don't think I need better. But I'm not <laughs> that tech skater that you are or i'm not skating i don't know i, I couldn't compare yeah, I my skating to to anyone else i just do my thing so i don't know it works for me for sure i think it's something you really get used to you know and yeah of course if I, if you skate it like if you skate like that every day like i used to then that's that's the yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. it's it perfect but if you know it kind of lacks your kind of chance to do some some specific moves or something then you can just yeah <laughs> the thing is, did, were you ever one of those skaters? Because I was like this for a while, which is there was a, an era in skating that we used to go to a ledge and then there was like a group of people, 5, 10, 15 people. It doesn't really matter how many we were, but we would stop like like in the line or whatever, 10 meters from the ledge and we run for 3 meters, we roll for 2 or 3 and then we grind the ledge and then we stop on the other side and we do the same. And I don't know if you ever yeah. done that, but now, right now it just... I can't imagine myself doing it again. <laughs> yeah, different, you know, time changed. We used to do it. We used to skate in winter, you know, in the snow. We didn't have, like, indoor skate parks or anything. We used to just clean up snow, you know, run through the snow, roll a few meters, do a grind, just basically land in the snow and go back up and do it again. For sure. <laughs> That's so sick. Like, I have the same. It's just like, right now, I just can't imagine because, man... I don't know, I freak out. If I don't feel the wind in my face, I just can't. I don't know. Yeah, like... the... oh, yeah for sure. <laughs> okay, Nils. I think we're coming to an end. We've been talking for like an hour. And it took us quite a little bit of time to be able to organize this because you were traveling, you were doing your camps and stuff. Before we finish, do you want to talk about those camps that you were doing in Poland? Uh, yeah, sure. I went to Poland to... To be part of the camp, uh, Yogurt from Poland, he's like organizing probably the biggest blading world, I don't know. Yeah, he like is the force of, let me, sorry, let me interrupt you just to tell yeah. everyone listening to these that Yogurt, he was, he's like a really, really good skater from since i don't know since the early 2000s he's been known for like doing like really big stuff but a few years ago he started his own school and right now in poland he is able to leave from teaching skating and he's he lives quite comfortably so sorry to interrupt you can mm -hmm. keep going but for those who don't know he is like one of the most successful skate instructors around yeah he's doing a great job he's an instructor and he's even like I think he's like even teaching other other instructors so they can be more cert, cert, certified instructors in Poland and there's a lot of schools around different big towns in Poland and they're doing a great job. So they have a camp, like the, the annual summer camp, rural camp, so I just 
meet together with a few head and skate homies. We joined it for the like last three days of the camp. Just be part of the lessons and uh, classes with kids. Show them some moves. Uh, watch some movies. Tell them about ourselves as well. Just be part of them and you know live together with them. And and it's cool for kids to be with their heroes. You know, like it's they look at you and they look at the other guys and they want to be like you. So. That's a cool thing, in my opinion. For sure. I can imagine in my like childhood, that would be the most incredible camp ever, you know? You're just in an area where there's like three skate parks, like some pros, and all you do is eat, skate, and be with your friends. So <laughs> it's just like perfect. Nothing more kids would want out of their summer, you know? That's amazing. And it's, it's cool that you... Cause I totally see you as one of those kids' heroes because you're like you have a clean image. You're not like you know what I'm saying. Like there's a lot of trash top skaters out there, and sometimes just sometimes of their skating career or whatever you want to call it. But you've never been like that type of guy. So you're like for a brand, that's why I was making the question also before if you never got like a proposal to get paid from any other brand because. As someone who works for brands, you would be the perfect ambassador, like the pers the perfect pro skater for a brand, because you're good at skating. You can, you're interested in pro producing like quality content, and at the same time, you have like a really good image, like the perfect hero for kids. And that's what brands want. That's what brands want, and also that's what yeah. kids want, like guys like you to to look up to. So amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's just I didn't actually care at all about it. Like, I started to think more about the whole kind of, you know, how you present yourself and stuff just after, like, my, my injuries when I had more time off skating. So then I was just, like, skating and no matter whatever, like, partying as well and just skating and not even thinking, like, not even having, like a like, a vision of, like, Why am I doing this? What's my, my like goal and anything? I was just skating and kind of the injuries was a good time that kind of stopped me and let me think about as well what else I can do and what more impact I can make. So, man, some you know what? Sometimes being injured makes you look at things from the outside perspective, and that's a really important way to look at whatever we do. And if we always get it ourselves into like if we never look from the outside we will never see what we're doing right or wrong even i think it happens with a lot of us like sometimes some people just try to be away from skating for a little bit it doesn't matter what reason they it happens if it's like a, an injury or sometimes just lack of interest and whatever most of us who really have the passion for it we always end up getting back into it or whenever we come back we come back with like a a different energy, if we can say, it. just like a different way of looking into things. Yeah. And that's when we can make a difference. And that's, I think that's what you're doing right now. And you're doing it really nice. So thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> you find out your passion and on, a, on a different level. Yeah, for sure. When you kind of look on it from the side, you can figure it out once again. Why are you even doing it? You know, see how it makes you feel. Not just like, yeah, throw yourself into all like, Throw your body into injuries and party and that's don't when you care stop. at all. <laughs> that's when you stop <laughs> being Gary Kane Topsels on, <laughs> on <No>. drop rails. <laughs> I'm thankful for all the injuries, especially, yeah, it all just let me think. And, uh, I mean, it all led me to who I am here and now. So, I mean, it's all, it's all good. Every injury as well. <laughs> all good, man. So, we're stopping here. And I need to say thank you again for taking the time for these. And I want to wish you all the best. And I hope to see you in Berlin. Please make a plan. <laughs> I will look into it for sure. And Come on, make a plan. You Bring you your girlfriend. I know that you. she has some swell skates. So <laughs> make yes, it together yes. with her. <laughs> That'd be great for sure. Yeah. We'll look into it. Yeah, that would be cool. Man. Make she it. says, I think. Hey, right here. <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> Is she there? Yes, she's right here. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> not, not next to me, but ah, almost here. Ah, come on. 
<laughs> tell, tell, her, your... tell her that we already met in Portugal. Now she needs to come to South yeah. Africa. Because you guys would love it here. Like, seriously, if you enjoyed Portugal when we were together, there, like last, not this summer, last summer, you guys would love it here. So if you ever want to come, you're invited whenever you want. And just keep in mind, when it's snowing in your country, that's when it's summer here. So... <laughs> <laughs> just saying you know <laughs> i'll keep that in mind for sure. <laughs> okay man so again thank you so much we're gonna end up these right now and this yeah. should be <laughs> online tomorrow <laughs> okay okay best of luck for thank you, you so much well. thank <laughs> you so much and thank you and <laughs> best of luck to everything yep. hope to see you soon yes man same here <laughs> cheers man cheers Have a bye -bye. good evening. Bye. 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 And that was it. Nils Janssens, probably one of the best skaters in the world right now, just gave us his perspective on skating in 2017. Hope you enjoyed this skate talk. If you did enjoy this skate talk, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're already subscribing to the channel, well, maybe share this, tell your friends about it. If, you, if you're keen on trying to get more people into skates, I'm sure this will help you and help your friends getting more juiced into skating. At least that's what I hope to. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did enjoy this one, don't forget to give me some thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me thumbs down. Like, go for it. Give me thumbs down, but let me know why you give me thumbs down. And more important than anything else, just don't forget why we all started skating. Because it's fun. Hope to see you soon. Cheers. Vou viver até quando